What's up, everyone, and welcome to Roby Tech, where I, Justin Roby, aka Roby One Kenobi, the king of. T Not really the king, like the third cousin once removed. Anyway, anyway, I'm here to talk about tech with you, absolutely amazing and wonderful people. Now, we're going to get you up to speed on everything going on in the PC hardware and gaming world. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the Threadripper 3, the 10980XE, and Tesla Cybertrunk. So get ready, this is Roby Tech. Threadripper 3960X and 3970X IRL. So, we've all seen the theoretical numbers and percentages for the new line of Threadripper CPUs, but claims and charts by AMD are one thing. How do they actually perform in the real world? Well, let's just say freaking amazing. That's how. In benchmarks by Linus Tech Tips, Paul's Hardware, pretty much Bitwit, you name it, the new Threadrippers absolutely crush everything else out there, including the 10980XE, which we'll get to in a moment, in pretty much every arena aside from gaming. And even then, it's not like the Threadrippers are bad at gaming, it's just not what they were made for. Improvements to the lineup, aside from more cores, more power, and more goodness, is that you no longer have to choose between uniform and non-uniform memory access. It just works it out on its own. That means it's easier to go from rendering your sweet Star Wars fan film to playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order with no problem. The other thing that eagle-eyed viewers will notice is that there are some gaps in the chip that look just large enough to double down on chiplets, and we'll get to that later too. Now couple all of the awesomeness with the fact that AMD is now standardizing PCIe Gen 4 on all its products moving forward, a giant leap ahead of Intel. Is there anything negative to be said about the new Threadripper? Well, it's really that users with a second gen Threadripper, like myself and so many others, may have expected the boards and setups they purchased in the past to be scalable with the new chips. Now, while it may sting that you don't get to use your old board, I think the trade-off for a more efficient system, PCIe Gen 4, and all the speed that goes with these hashtag beefy cores is well worth it. So, Intel has been called out for making a bit of a questionable call. Again, referencing a video about the 10980XE that we'll talk about momentarily, by Linus Tech Tips and numerous other tech tubers, Intel made a shady move with their press embargo for review of their newest chip. For those of you who don't know what a press embargo means, it basically is that you can't talk or post about anything related to the product until a specific time and date, at which point then it's fair game. The issue this time is that the embargo was set for midnight, right before the release of the Threadripper 3, meaning that if a YouTuber wanted to get their content about the 10980XE out as soon as possible, and they do that because that's how YouTube works and that's how you get the majority of the views, they wouldn't have time to be able to make comparisons to the Threadripper 3, which would paint the 10980XE in a very bad light. Don't get me wrong, we like Intel. We just want them to do better. But this ain't the way to do it, Chief. It feels like some executive at Intel made the decision and now they have to live with it. And you know who you are, buddy. Probably sleeping right now because it's too early and you really should be sleeping. But I hope you're having bad dreams. Now there are plenty of great people doing great stuff at Intel, but all it takes is one person to ruin it for everyone. Anyways, now that the 10980XE is out, even if it was done in a less than stellar manner, how does it, how does it fare? Well, in fact, it's actually a very good CPU. It does pretty well in gaming and productivity as we would expect. But there are a few issues with the 10980XE. First of all, there are some situations where reviewers manage to get worse performance in the 10980XE than they did in its predecessor, the 9980XE. This kind of boggles the mind a bit, but Intel says that the wild card here is that the 9980XEs that were used to test were performing well above what they were expected to. And maybe some really good binning for a few 9980XEs? I don't know. Nevertheless, when it comes down to price versus performance, it's still a good option since it's similarly priced to the 9980XE after massive price cuts that we reported on earlier this year. That being said though, when you compare it to a 3960X and a 3970X and even the Ryzen 9 3950X, there are just better bang for your buck in the AMD camp right now. The fact that Intel is still operating on the PCIe Gen 3 space already puts them behind by a wide margin. When you can operate more effectively and faster on an AMD system rocking PCIe Gen 4 hardware, there really isn't an option here. So yeah, 
Not a bad processor, but it's clear that this had to be the last of its kind before Intel is forced to step up their game and switch to something next gen to play catch up to AMD. Come on Intel, seven nanometer process. We need to see it. With the booming success of the Threadripper 3960X and 3970X absolutely crushing the competition, AMD, is, AMD has since decided, you know what, we're not done yet. Why stop at a mere hashtag 32 beefy cores and 64 threads? So, AMD isn't just swinging for the fences on this one, they are building a bigger bar ballpark. Sports metaphors. I bet you a third of the people who watch this right now had no idea what I'm talking about. Well, today AMD has confirmed the rumors we had all hoped against our better judgment are in fact true. The Threadripper 3990X is going to have 64, you heard me right, 64 hashtag beefy cores and 128 threads. That makes the 3990X the world's first high-end desktop CPU with 64 beefy cores under the hood. Couple that with its 288 megabits total cash, and that's cash money. Literally, the thing is probably going to go for $2,000 without breaking a sweat, which I would hope given that the 3970X is $1999.99.99.99. In other words, $2,000. Do keep in mind that if you are going to pull the trigger on this third ripper, it's going to take a lot of juice with a 280 watt TDP. So you're not going to get away with air cooling this. No, no, no. A custom water loop will be essential to getting the most grunt out of those cores. Now, AMD is planning to release the 3090X sometime in 2020. 2020. So not only did they pummel the 10980XE, they've probably beaten whatever else Intel has up their sleeve next year to pulp. Rip. Now, with a price tag that's bound to be sky high and requiring an intense cooling solution, AMD isn't targeting your average content creator or gamer for this chip. Instead, they've got their sights set on Hollywood level productions and workstation markets. How do you think the 3990X will stack up against the new release Threadrippers? Let us know in the comments below. Now, what is this? A car segment on our PC and tech show? Blasphemy, I tell you. But let's be real for a second. The Cybertruck is going to go down in history as one of the weirdest reveals and demonstrations for a piece of technology. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, the Cybertruck is Tesla's newest model that they announced recently, adding a pickup truck to their lineup of electric vehicles. The first thing that everyone noticed, though, is the looks. It looks freaking weird. It's like a low polygon render of a warthog from Halo mashed up with, like, a DeLorean. The internet has been split on whether they like it or hate it, with no in-between. But why does it look the way it looks? Well, that's because rather than a body or frame designed from like your neighbor's F-150, the Cybertrunk is essentially a one-piece mono-Q, mono-Co-Q, mono, I don't know, I read this like 10 times in the script, mono-Co-Q, M-O-N-O-C-O-Q-U-E, with an ex exoskeleton made out of cold rolled steel. That is so metal. This means that it's strong, like real strong. Now, Elon Musk said that this is the same metal that they are using to build the next spaceship out of SpaceX because he owns that too. To show off how strong it is, they had someone take a sledgehammer to the door of an F-150, denting it quite handily. And I'm sorry, Brian, you now have a giant dent in your F-150. Uh, if you wanna write at Elon Musk to get that fixed, that'd be nice. After that, they took the same sledgehammer to the Cybertrunk and there a scratch or dent to be seen. But this is where a lot of the memes came from, they also said that the glass was shatterproof. To prove this, they had a sheet of glass in a frame and dropped a big metal ball bearing on it from a significant height, like 12 inches. I'm just kidding, it was much higher than that. After that, they wanted to show how it would hold up on the car by chucking the same ball bearing at the window, only instead of not breaking, it did the opposite that and shattered. <laughs> It was pretty funny. But we're not done yet. Oh no, Elon decided they would try it on another window on the demo truck, and once again, it shattered. Whoa, boy. Now, Elon later claimed that the bottom edge of the glass had been damaged when they hit it with a sledgehammer. Isn't it supposed to be like, not, isn't that supposed to not be a thing? I don't think the internet's buying that excuse, nor those of us over here at hashtag Robitech. So what are the specs and price, you ask? Well, 
You have three options, a single motor, rear wheel drive version making some amount of horsepower with a claim zero to 60 of 6.5 seconds, a towing capacity of 7,500 pounds and a range of about 250 miles unless you drive with a heavy foot. You also have the option of a dual motor, all wheel drive version that will send you from zero to 60 in about 4.5 seconds, capable of towing 10,000 pounds with a 300 mile-ish range. Finally, there's the big boy version with three motors and an all wheel drive that will blast you from 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Just so you're clear, that is super car fast with a towing capacity of the moon or about 14,000 pounds. Okay, the moon's bigger than that, but it, it, I, given how much we've escalated, it felt like you could tow the moon, which is a ton, or seven of them to be precise, and a range of 500 miles, similar to, to Toyota Corolla's new, to, the new Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Except you get to look like you're in Blade Runner, like all the time. Now pricing was surprising. It comes in at 39,900, 49,900, and 69,900 69, respectively. 69,900 will probably also be the cost of the 3990X. <laughs> See what I did there? I brought it all back. So for those of you who don't know, that's the numbers taking on the F-150, the Raptor, and the Trendra TRD Pro and more. Now it does appear to be growing on some people, though the more they look at it, the more people think about photoshopping and 3D modeling programs in which to make it look like things like the Batmobile or the Warthog. Also, they made an ATV that can charge in the back of the truck. So there's that. I wonder if you charge it in the back of the truck and it steals all the juice, do you just go to the ATV and then take that to go get a battery to then charge the... Man, that is, that is so meta. You use the ATV to tow the truck. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you use the ATV to tow the truck. Anyway, that is it for today on Robitech. What do you think Intel can do to get back in the game after AMD has dropped a ton of bangers this year with plans already announced for next year? Is all of this info about Ryzen and Threadripper enough to make you switch from Team Blue to Team Red? Now, while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. Also, head on over to Mixer.com slash Roby1Kenobi and give us a follow over there for our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific. Also, be sure to follow us over on Twitter at Roby1Kenobi and check us out on Instagram at Roby1Kenobi as well. Thank you so much for watching. Now, go play some games or maybe pre-order your Cybertruck. Up to you. Hashtag beefy cores.